But you see, when you make deals with the devil, that devil is going to come back to collect on you. And you're going to end up with much less than you started with, than you even intended to receive. And there are some people that are so deeply entrenched in these low vibrational, demonic, devilish energies that it seems that they can just go about things left and right, willy-nilly doing whatever it is they want, and they don't ever seem to get their comeuppance. As soon as whatever, the universe decides that enough is enough, all of that karma is going to come back to you. This is why we don't make deals with the devil. And this is why we don't practice black magic. Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, for your moment, whenever, yeah? Please keep in mind this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. This does not have to resonate for you at any specific time. This can resonate at any moment in your life, yeah? So, Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, yes. Uh, so, because it's Wednesday, um, normally I would save any sort of collective sessions or collective readings for messages for happy hour, or at least that's what I've been saying lately. Um, but it's about quarter to seven in the morning and I've been up for a few hours, been up since like 4.30. And I've just been hanging, just been chilling, you know. Um, I went on a nice little walk with the cats this morning and they follow me everywhere. I love it. I love it. They're like, they're like dogs, but not. <laughs> anyway, so I spent some time outside. We went out for a little bit of a walk. I made some coffee. I've just been kind of hanging out here. And I felt called to do morning coffee today. There's a message that wants to come through. Spirit wants me to deliver a message, so I'm going to do that. So, um, uh, I am still planning on doing happy hour, though, yeah? So anyone that would like to get on, in on happy hour, um, most of you know the drill, uh, but I'll leave information in the description box down below um, so that if you'd like to get on the list for happy hour, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, we'll be going live around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube today. Uh, sep not September, October 6th, yes? So, yay. All right, so we're gonna do that. And so when I go through, when I go live for happy hour today, I'm not going to really try and focus too much on bringing any sort of general collective readings or messages through. Um, if it happens, it happens. I'm not saying it absolutely won't, but um, my focus is solely going to be on whomever wants to get a personal reading at that time. Yeah. And if we have the time and, you know, if the, the those that are there want, want a collective message, I'll do one. No worries about that. It's just, you know, happy hour is for those who want to get a personal reading, a really quick message. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember what that was now, so it'll probably come back to me. So anyway, moving forward here, um, I'm really feeling, I'm digging using the before and the after tarots here. So we're going to start with the before tarot, and then we're going to get our clarification from the after tarot, yeah? And yes, and this is a general message, this is a general reading, and I don't really have an agenda, even though it's three minutes into the video and I'm still rambling, I don't really have an agenda. <laughs> so I don't... So this is purely uh, a blind channel, all right? So we're just gonna see what's gonna come through for the collective today. And yeah, let's get these messages sent, shall we? Here we go, let's get into this, kids. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, 
circumstances, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, kids. I'm going to give this five shuffles. Yeah? So, let's see what we've got for today. This is one. This is two. This is three. is four. And this is five. All righty. Let's see here. What messages do we have for the collective? What, what do you want to discuss with the collective today, please, Spirit? Change, transformation. Somebody seems to have lost their independence. Overall energy, oof, okay, yeah. Overall energy is the Five of Cups. Um, what you have here, a number of things have come out, but the first card to come out is death. So this is so this is where I'm getting the change from. This is a trans, this is a transition, this is a transformation. This literally could be a transition from being physically alive to crossing back over to the spirit realm, i.e. death, actual death. But I'm not wishing that on anybody. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be out here talking about, ooh, they gonna die now. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay. But it is entirely possible. Now, I am hearing someone has lost their life. But really, I'm hearing someone has lost their livelihood. That's what I'm hearing. There's a big transition here that's happening, a big transformation that's happening. Next card that came out is the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is in reverse, all right? So someone has lost their autonomy. Someone has lost their, um, I heard their sense of direction, their sense of individuality. Someone has also lost their sense of mortality, which could mean that someone has passed over, all right? But... Again, I'm just, I'm just channeling the energies, bringing forward the message that's coming forward. I'm not wishing death or ill will or ill health on anybody. And quite frankly, what this feels like here is someone has brought that upon themselves. Now, we've been talking about this for the last few days. It started with backfire, which was the morning coffee message for Monday. And then yesterday, Tuesday, I don't remember, what was the name, what was the name of the title? Um, oh, the illusion has broken, okay? And now we're talking about this here. So this all kind of feels like it's, it feels like and sounds like it's connected, okay? But really what, at the baseline of what I'm picking up on here with death and the nine of pentacles in reverse, someone has lost their sense of independence. Someone has lost their sense of autonomy. It has been stripped away from them, it feels like in some cases. And it all has to do with their own actions. So this could have been a, a, an individual who had malicious intent and was using that against other people to steal from them what it is they thought they were worth or worthy of or deserving of. Unfortunately, when situations like that arise, when you decide to take something from someone that was not yours to begin with, regardless as to how, feel, how justified you feel, when you use means of Oof, I heard narcissism. So we're talking about anything in the realm of super, super selfishness, okay? Egotism. When you use your power, whether you believe in magic or not, everybody's got it, okay? Everyone. But when you use that power to destroy someone else, you might be successful. You may be completely successful, uh, and, or you might be successful to a certain extent. But that will come back 
to haunt you. You will reap that which you have sown. And unfortunately for this person, it seems that they have reaped exactly what it is they sowed for someone else. Now, I'm not saying that they weren't successful in to some degree. But it's really interesting because um, many of you, all y'all know, I watch Queen Cup when she releases things on YouTube. And many of us watch her here. And one of the latest messages that she put out recently was when you try and go and when you try and get things by using the devil's offer or going with what the devil is offering you instead of just going with what the divine is offering you. Okay, and in this channeled message, she says she brings forward the, the, the truth of the fact that the devil will get you something right away. Whereas when you go through the divine, it takes more time. But you see, when you make deals with the devil, that devil is going to come back to collect on you. And you're going to end up with much less than you started with, than you even intended to receive. And there are some people that are so deeply entrenched in these low vibrational, demonic, devilish energies that it seems that they can just go about things left and right, willy-nilly, doing whatever it is they want, you know, sowing seeds of destruction and pain and, and turmoil and heartbreak for others, and they don't ever seem to get their comeuppance, or they don't ever seem to get the karmic pushback. And that's because they're in on the devil's side. But as soon as they lose that grace, or as soon as their time is up, or whatever, as soon as whatever, the universe decides that enough is enough, all of that karma is going to come back to you. This is why we don't make deals with the devil. And this is why we don't practice black magic. Let me ask you something. And this is more of a rhetorical question. And I know many of you are going to be, have the answer to this, to this question already. But I want to pose this question to those of you that watch me. Because you have something against me. Or you want to destroy me. Or you're my enemy. You labeled yourself as my enemy. What not, whatever. For whatever reason. Okay. Let me ask you something. Don't you ever remember hearing when you were a kid, whenever we would talk about or whenever like witchcraft or anything was talked about? You remember the golden rule? Well, okay, there are two golden rules. There's the biblical golden rule and then there's the golden rule of magic. The biblical golden rule is do unto others as you would do unto yourself, something to that extent. When it comes to magic and witchcraft, the rule is what everything you put out comes back to you times three i really don't understand why why or how people have forgotten that it's quite convenient that they've forgotten it but it's not convenient for them when the devil comes to call and now you're you are losing your independence or you're caught in strife. That which you sow, so shall ye reap. Right? This is why we don't this is why this is why we don't practice black magic. This is why we don't project or put harm out there towards others. Only if for the sheer fact that you don't want to get yourself caught up in that yourself, right? What else do we have here? Strength and the Wheel of Fortune. The first thing that I got with strength when I saw this, when it came out, was ego. And what I'm getting here with strength and the Wheel of Fortune is it's only a matter of time before your ego egoic ways catch up with you. Look, nobody is innocent in this world, okay? We all have our things to answer for. We all make our mistakes. We all have to face ourselves, all right? 
So I don't want this message to come across as like I'm in some holier than thou position or or like like what like I don't have my own issues like I'm not a human being <laughs> susceptible to the to the the law of the land right That's not it at all The difference is I don't go out there intending to hurt anyone Yes, I get angry. Yes, I get sad. Yes, I get emotional. Yes, sometimes I get rageful. That part, that element to me is a little heartbreaking. Because I can be very rageful. And it's gotten to a point now where lately I really, I really, well, it's always kind of been that way. Um, but I was more on edge when I was a kid and a teenager and in my 20s and all that. And I've done a lot of work to heal from a lot of that, so okay. I have a little more of a grasp on it now, but if you really push me long enough and hard enough and far enough, man, there is a monster in me that none of us wants out. It's the truth. I'm not ashamed of it. I am human just like you. I am not better than you. I am not better than you. You are not better than me. We are all equals in the eyes of the Lord. God, source, creator, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't give a shit. No one person is better than or more worthy than another. So now, overall energy, someone deals with the sorrow. Five of Cups. Interestingly enough, Underneath the Five of Cups is the Six of Wands and then the Ten of Swords. And what, I, what I'm hearing with the Six of Wands here is surrender. Someone may even be going to jail. Or they may be in a spiritual jail. All because of their deception, lies, and treachery. So someone, it feels like here someone has lost their power. Someone has lost, I just heard someone has lost their claim to fame. Thinking that they got it like that. They, they, that they can go out here and do whatever it is that they want and affect anybody and get away with it. But you see the tricky part about all of that, you guys, is that underneath these meat suits, Underneath this physical garb, underneath this physical projection of a being, we don't see the soul. Or at least this person didn't see the soul underneath the individual. Y'all don't know who you're fucking with. You don't. You don't know who's on the other side protecting whomever. Until... You mess with the wrong person. And now you've got the gods to answer to. And goddesses to answer to. The Lord himself, herself, to answer to. Balance will be restored. Two of pentacles. Don't worry. Let's clarify. Let's clarify. Four shuffles here. One. Two. golden rule from a biblical sense is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Is that what it, I mean, whatever. <laughs> this is three. And this is four.
balance will be restored. Let's start with death and the nine of pentacles in reverse. Just, oh, well, would you look at that? The nine of pentacles is at the bottom of the deck now. That's interesting. Oof. All right, I'm, I'm being asked to read this. So I'm going to read this, but then I'm going to pull uh, official cards for this. You have the nine of pentacles and the star. And the king of pentacles. Someone really thought they had it like that. That they were God's golden child or some shit. Unfortunately, that's been brought to an end. The world and the three of swords. And now there's a new journey for them to start. The fool, which is a journey that's going to teach them compassion. Knight of Cups, and is going to show them the effects of that which they have sown. But I'm, but see, I what I'm what I'm picking up on here is a life review. Oh gosh, oh gosh, um, the effects of what they have sown. Right, they're going to be seen. They're going to be shown that, and they're going to be shown how their reluctance to do their inner work what that has created for them. This person would much rather destroy other people or come after people and question their character and dole out justice on behalf of the universe when they're not even self-aware enough to be able to perceive of their own transgressions. Death with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Some clarity, please, Spirit. deals with the devil at some point he's going to come to collect the devil strength ego two more cards that have fallen face down your past is coming back to haunt you Death with the Six of Cups. You have death clarifying death, bro. Sis. The universe says, I can't get any clearer. You have brought this on yourself. Lies, trickery, deceit, transgressions. I don't understand why people can't mind their own damn business. And it seems that it's the most religious individuals that are so busy out here running around calling people sinners. You're going to burn in hell. You're an abomination. And they can't even get their own shit together. <laughs> Yo, like... Let's move forward. The Wheel of Fortune and Strength. And what this was saying was, eventually, your egoic ways are going to catch up with you. So, some clarity on, um, actually, let's read this first before I move any further. I'm looking at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the devil, you have 
the higher font. Which is so funny because I was just talking about how some of the real, most religious, like the religious zealots out there, are so quick to run around and label people sinners and all that shit, right? And right underneath the devil is the hierophant himself, that exact institutionalized energy that does that shit. But okay, that's one way to look at the hierophant. The other way to look at the hierophant is kind of a Saturnian energy. And what I'm getting here is, have you learned your lesson? Because the hierophant is a great teacher. I mean, technically, the hierophant represents institutions of, like, university and schooling and, and, and education, higher learning and all that stuff, right? So did you learn your lesson? Because underneath the hierophant is the king of cups. And the king of cups is emotionally mature. And you see how this is the after tarot. You see how homeboy here is pouring out that cup? It seems like someone here has an opportunity to pour out the cup of malice they've been drinking from and to start something new. The Page of Pentacles. And yes, you're gonna be, really need to be emotionally mature to be able to look at that cup and what's in it and what you've been drinking from, what you've been ingesting, whether that's figurative or literal. Look at it and say, this is no good and pour it out. Especially when whatever cup you've been drinking from has been full of shit that is nothing but ego, ego, ego. It's going to take a strong will to pour that ego out, isn't it? Yes. But it's worth it. Yeah. Um... That's really what this is going to take. I'm still reading at the bottom of the deck, but that's really what this is going to take. Somebody's going to have to take. Somebody's going to have to pour this out, start something new, get very clear on themselves. Four of Swords, and that will allow them. And, and that, oh Lord, look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Get very clear. Clear your mind. Clear your head, okay? That will help you break out of this spiritual prison, we'll call it because you will have found balance and thus changed the karma with love. Unconditional love, understanding, compassion, peace, harmony. We are all one here. And yes, we may have different skin colors. Yes, we may come from different land masses. Yes, we may speak different languages. Yes, we all have different beliefs. Even the indigenous cultures, which were highly advanced, by the way. But even indigenous cultures had different beliefs and they could still coexist. But then the Western world came in and labeled them savages. Let's move forward here. I want to talk about strength and the wheel of fortune. Yeah? So a little bit clarity, a little, a little clarity, please, spirit. Strength and the wheel of fortune. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Take it? No, not necessarily. Well, I will just mention that the high priestess flashed, but it wasn't necessary for come out to come out. Um, but she did flash. Mystery, higher wisdom. The high priestess is the is the counterpart to the hierophant. And what that's kind of telling me at this point is that the high priestess and the hierophant work hand in hand. You came down here to the earth plane. You came down to earth specifically. No other planet in all of existence. You came to earth. You came to the realm of the Hierophant to learn certain physical lessons that teach you and prepare you for the higher wisdom, the even higher wisdom of the high priestess. You came down to earth to experience separation from unity, from oneness, from everything, 
even though it's an illusion. You're not actually separated, but we are here in the illusion of separation. But we come to this, this plane to learn this and have this experience in order to develop our personalities. When you die, when your body, when your physical meat suit expires, your soul lives on and you retain that sense of identity. And as you go through lifetime after lifetime, you continue to fine tune that until you are ready to break back into the awareness of oneness. But even when you go back to oneness, you still retain your identity as an individual. So this is an, you can say this is an initiation process. And I really feel like that's why the high priestess flashed. She didn't really want to come out. She just wanted me to tell you that. Explain that little bit to them, please. Okay. Now we can move forward. Overall energy is the fool. Excellent. New beginnings. This might be a dark period right now for whomever this reading is resonating with. But understand that you have a new beginning at your disposal or at your grasp, at your fingertips. But in order to take advantage of that new beginning, you have got to learn compassion. Knight of Cups. You have to. Regardless as to what is going on in the earth plane right now, physically speaking, okay? regardless as to where we find ourselves at this point. You are not going to be able to move up the evolutionary ladder or up the ascension ladder, whatever you want to call it, without compassion. Because if you don't accept compassion, then you are following the path of self service. The law of one talks about this. I've been talking about the law of one for months, or at least I've mentioned it for a while. We've been talking about this, you guys. So maybe this is a physical example. But when you follow the path of service to self, you reject unity, which means you reject love. And you take on the belief that love is weakness, that might is right, that if someone has, ha, is weak enough to be susceptible to the danger and destruction you throw at them, well, then they deserved it. That is incorrect. You will only get so far without compassion. And you will be left behind. Not forever, of course. Time is an illusion. There is no expiration date for anything other than your physical body and all that, okay? And yes, what's every month, every, you know, there are cycles to everything. What, and there's ebb and flow and like, yeah, all right, fine. But I lost where I was going with that. Anyway, you've got to learn compassion. Knight of Cups. It's the only way you're going to graduate from here. Two more cards have fallen face down. It's energies underneath the surface. One of them has fallen on this pile here. That is death and the nine of pentacles in reverse and the subsequent um, uh, clarification. It is. Oof. It is the three of wands in reverse. Total recalibration of your path. There is no way forward from here. In this light, in this vein, in this way, there is no way forward here. You've reached a dead end. Now, some will choose from their egoic position. Some will choose to stand there and fight for that and fight to continue to, in, to increase their power. That's what I'm getting. But that's not going to work out well for you or them, whomever. You're just going to be stuck here 
You're just gonna be stuck here, right? Casting spells on people to take people down so you can validate yourself all the while generating more and more and more karma that you are going to have to answer for. And sure, you may come across the, the person here or there, or the, the, you, you may even, you may even specify in going after convicts, criminals, deplorables, whatnot, what, 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 blah, 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 blah. That is not your responsibility. Mind your own business. There's one more card that's fallen face down here. It's more energies underneath the surface and it's fallen in the middle of everything. It is. The sun in reverse. Now, don't get me wrong. This is still a good thing. It's still a good thing because it's the sun. Regardless as to how it comes out and regardless as to whatever it comes out with, it's still a good thing. But I can bet you that whomever is reaping what it is that they've sown, they don't like it. They don't like it at all. You might as well go ahead and call this third, fourth, fifth, sixth degree burns. This is probably going to leave this person a bit disfigured. Maybe just, maybe even just emotionally. This is why we don't play with black magic, you guys. Because you will reap what you have sown. And most times it's going to come back to you in ways that are fiercer, stronger than you tried to put out. And it's definitely not going to be when, where, or how you expect. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I want to leave it there. I really don't want to read into any more of this. But let's get our oracle guidance. And um, we're going to close this out with the secret language of light. Well, I'm going to take this card. And they're saying that I can pull another one if I want to. I feel like I want to. I mean, it really isn't that necessary, but what's I was just opening the box, and what has come out here is card number one, soul name. And what this is saying to me, you guys, what this card is saying is that your soul wants you to recognize who you are in the midst of everyone else as well. Because whomever you have become at this point is not truly who you are. It's not. I'm also hearing stop judging yourself. I mean, yes, there may be things, some things that you need to answer for at this moment, but the extra judgment is not, it's not, it's not going to help you. It's only going to make things worse, okay? Let's pull another card. But that really wanted to be seen. And when, as soon as I saw that card, I was like, ooh. Like, I feel, I feel the emotion. It's like your own soul is, is calling for you to understand it. It's calling for you to recognize who you are. And it's not just from an egoic place of, I am this, I am that, I am blah, blah, blah. No, who are you in relation to the collective? Three shuffles. One. Two and three. All right. So, closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. There it is, right there. Yo, your soul is really calling out to somebody. Card number 16, which does boil down to a seven. A seven is a number of good luck. But that luck is not one, it's earned. You have to work for it. You've gotta learn, you've gotta gain the wisdom 
and put that wisdom into practice, that's when the luck comes to you. Luck doesn't happen by chance. Luck is created. And you create that luck by gaining the wisdom, learning the lessons. You thought five was a tough one? Don't you, don't you, hoo, 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 get ready for seven. Ask your soul. Something you have asked for will soon turn up in your life. Every time you request something, you plant a seed in your quantum field or vibrational reality where it begins to grow and move toward you. This is how we create and expand consciousness. Asking is the first step in any creation. It only needs to be about 10% of the creative process. But somehow, most of us make it about 90%. If we don't see any evidence of our desires are coming into existence, we keep asking. This holds us in a place where the answers can't be heard. What you desire is on its way. You only need to ask once. It doesn't matter whether this is out loud or in your mind because the universe interprets vibrations and not words. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love, care, grace, redemption, healing, forgiveness, and justice. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Take care. Mwah!